Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the SBK Betting Podcast. It's Cheltenham November meeting preview time. And what a Cheltenham meeting we have in store. We're going to get into um, previewing it with Tom and Ross. But first off, um, we'll just remind ourselves of what a good weekend we had last weekend. Jess Gill, 100 to 30 in the Sefton for TC. Um, a very gutsy performance from that horse to go one better than he did last year. He was 100 to 30. Um, also, TC had a great weekend in in all two seconds. Um, and also the well backed one to two favourite Rubo in the Elite Hurdle. Ross, uh, while Giovinco won well at five to six. So, all in all, a good enough weekend. I would say that we'd want to find some nice bigger prices for our listeners as well this weekend. And maybe we have plenty of races to do so. Um, we will be featuring um, that Gold Cup handicap chase at Cheltenham um, at 2.20 on Saturday. It has been um, talked about now for the last week or so that it could uh, really turn into one of the race, one of really vintage renewal of this race and to have um, uh, two uh, Cheltenham Festival winners in the shape of the real Wacker, uh, the Brown Advisory Novice Chase winner and Stage Star, um, who was um, that great Turner's Novice Chase winner in there and confirmed. And well, that makes it, uh, if it was just them two taking each other on, we'll be excited, but we've got so much more than that. And while the real Wacker being the, the real, real star of the show, I suppose, having to defy 12 stone. And well, SBK went down to do a, a feature on this horse. So make sure that you have a look back on that feature at Patrick Neville's Yard if you've not seen it. Um, there is a YouTube link on the podcast description about that story because it's a real heartwarming one. And uh, I think it's just great for racing to have a story like that for a yard um, like Patrick Neville's. And just to have him in the race um, is very exciting. And I think that we should start maybe, Ross, with you as a, a real jumps fan to really explain what why it's important to have these sort of grade one type of horses and plenty of them beginning life off this season in a handicap. It's it's what the sport is all about. Yeah, it, it's the most exciting section of races, I think. It's also the hardest, in my opinion, to, to find a winner because you've got second season novices coming through. You've got horses that have perhaps been climbing the handicap ranks coming up the level. And then you've got genuine graded performers in the likes of the Real Wacker and Stage Star dropping down into handicap company so it really does give you i think over the series of the winter and you get sort of three or four of these at cheltenham a very good sort of idea of the pecking order of handicappers that might be able to step up into graded company and horses that have perhaps done it in graded company as a novice that are perhaps going to struggle at graded company in, in open company um for me i just uh, like i've watched the, the the real whacker piece and and you'd have to have a heart of stone not to want him to go well but i, I struggle to follow the logic of of running him here. I mean, just to put it into context, he ran off a mark of 162. Denman won his first Hennessy off a mark of 161. It's a it's going to be a mammoth effort to win this first time out off, off 162 on this track because I think he got his rating of 162 over three miles. I think that undoubtedly brought about improvement. Yes, he's won at this at this trip over shorter, but that was in the dipper and that was on the uh, new course, which is a much stiffer track. Um, I just think he's got it all to do uh, for all that would be a really exciting story that he could do it. Um, and then, I mean, sort of TC stole my mantle with some mad selections on the uh, uh, National Home Preview pod earlier this week. So I'm going to steal his mantle and, and give you a stat. Uh, the last horse to win this first time out. Silence. Anna, Anna Cotty in 2015. So it's a, it's a it's a fair well. Horses don't tend to win this first time out. They tend to to need a run. So that that put me off uh, the likes of Stage Star. Um, not long till May doesn't look particularly well handicapped against Stage Star. He was beaten three and three quarter lengths, uh, and he only gets three pound here. I struggle to see him turning it round. Uh, Fugitive is a horse I really like, um, and I do know he's been working well. They they want the rain. Um, but again, he's first time out, and I, and I just wonder whether this is is going to quite suit him on this track. I think he might be better uh, in December on on the new course. For all that I know, Sean Bowen came in when he was second in the plate. Sean Bowen came in and said the standing start they had there cost him the race. So if you if you're with Fugitive, there's an argument there that he's still perhaps well handicapped. Il Rodoto and Fugitive tie in together. Freddie Ginger takes some weight off, but you imagine 
Mr. Nichols is perhaps a little bit irritated that Freddie rode a winner for his uncle this week, which means he now claims five, not seven, which is what he claimed when he was originally given the ride last weekend. Um, and I'm just not certain Il Ridotto and Freddie are gonna gonna gel. I really like Freddie Ginger. I think he's really positive. Um, his his ride in the uh, Halden Gold Cup was excellent, but I'm not sure Il Ridotto likes being shoved around. I think he's a bit of a soft horse and might just not suit Freddie. Final orders was interesting. I tipped him when he ran at Chepstow and it was that run that put me off because he weakened very tamely and they've reached for the tongue tie. There's two ways of looking at that. If it does its job, great. But I think the fact they've reached for it suggests there's perhaps a little bit of a wind issue. Danny Gilligan is good for his five pounds. So he was really interesting and he'll like the ground. But the one I came down on was Angel's Breath for Sam Thomas, who's hit the ground running uh, this season. Um, this horse has been as high as 151. Uh, he's down to 144. He'll suit this track. My concern with him at, at the sort of uh, anti-post stage is if this was a big field, I wasn't sure how his jumping would hold up, but it's not a massive field. I think he'd be able to find some space. Um, he ran well and has had a hurdle prep, finished behind Pinnacle Peak in front of Rambo T. That ground was far too quick. He's definitely a better chase than he is hurdler. Um, I think Sam Thomas has taken a while to nurse him back to what he was. Um, but I think this is his chance. And with a prep run, ticks a few boxes. Sam Thomas going, well, in a wide open race, he'll do for me at a decent price. He's not won since 2019 when he was with Nicky Henderson. He's clearly had so many issues. It was, what was it, two and a bit years he was off the track. And they've, I've, as you quite rightly said, nursed him back. Um, is he a horse that's ground dependent? Look, I'm just looking at how much rain that they might have at, at Cheltenham. It's soft already, which is a surprise for a track that sometimes can't get soft into the going description. So a horse that's not really proven beyond two and a half mile on really deep ground. Do you think it might become a bit of a slog if we get a lot more rain? He, he won on heavy. So I think the ground will be fine. I think the stamina is perhaps the question, you know, uh, over this trip if the ground gets testing. But I, I think he, he's perhaps a horse that will step up in trip. He was very keen, if you remember, back when Nick Henson, he was always a very free-going horse. He's matured and he's relaxed. I think he could be a horse that will actually get further by the end of the season. OK, he's got Johnny Burke on as well, who replaces Sam Tristan Davis, who's obviously on the real whacker. Um, that's not a bad jockey booking at all, is he, considering how well um, Johnny Burke did throughout the course of last season and back after... I think a brief, he had a brief spell on the sidelines as well, but uh, you can imagine he's going to try and pick up from where he left off um, last year as well. So I think Angel's Breath, um, who would be around about 11 to 1 shout, I think the quite nice prices for what you have got graded horses in this race. Stage star is 4 to 1, just ahead of the real whacker at 6 to 1, not long till May um, for the Laura Morgan team, 7 to 1, as is Unexpected Party, 7 to 1. Fugitive eight to one. Um, Tom, with that in mind, I suppose is this a race that you look at stats as you know uh, as as much as you normally do because it doesn't feel like it's like that traditional kind of race that we see year on year, like sort of the Dower handicappers. It's a you've got to put the stats to one side when you've got these type of really really ex excellent classy individuals in this lineup. Yeah, I try to cover all bases, uh, much like most races. So stats are included, but at the same time, as you say, it's a completely different lineup to what we're kind of expecting in these races with the uh, majority of the market leaders coming out of novice chases last year, two grade one Cheltenham Festival winners, as you say, in stage star and the real whacker. And if either of those had had a previous run so far this season, I think they'd be quite a commanding favourite in this race. But the absences are a big concern for me. Look, we know they both handle the track. Uh, but they've got big weights coming off 200 plus day absences. They're going to have to prove that they're fit and capable of uh, lumping this weight and the high uh, handicap rating to, to success. And just because they are first and second favorite at the moment, I think you've kind of got to take them on, especially with the testing ground. That's not to say either of them can't win. Uh, they definitely could. They are the class horses in the race. But we've seen plenty of Paul Nichols runners need the run, um, which would be a slight negative for me with stage star. And I just don't know about the real whacker. If he can dominate off the front end and doesn't get pressed, jumps as well as he did last year, then, of course, he's a major threat. But as I say, he's short enough in the betting given the layoff. So I've got to oppose those two. Ross has summed this race up very nicely. Uh, so I don't want to completely um, copy everything he said. But I'm also against a couple of others, including Il Rodoto, who I think is very well suited 
to Harry Cobden and maybe not Freddie Gingell uh, for the reasons that uh, Ross said. I also loved this horse in general. He was my dark horse to follow last year. But I backed him first time up last season and he travelled like the best horse in the race. I was on course that day. I was getting all excited as they turned for home. Uh, and he just seemed to pay for um, the exertions going up the hill. And I think that could be a similar story this time around. Uh, he's better with a run under his belt. And if he's not 100% fit, which you really struggle to get a horse 100% fit off a long layoff, then I think he might pay for that. Unexpected Party beat a good horse in Napa's Hill last time. But Unexpected Party was primed for the race and Napa's Hill wasn't. I'm also not too sure about the ground. And Unexpected Party finished behind Stage Star last year on at least two occasions. Uh, similar thing could be said for not long till May, who again has to reverse the form with Stage Star. And is very low at his fences as well. And that's got to be a concern for me. So I too looked for one at a bigger price. I didn't end up going for Angel's Breath, but I did end up going for Fugitive, um, who's just been a model of consistency since he's gone chasing. He's got more experience over fences than the majority of these horses, which I think is key. He loves testing ground. Again, a big tick in the box as some of these probably want it a bit more on the good side. Um, he can go well fresh. He's won first time up before. And he ran very well on all three starts at this venue last year. So. Fugitive around 10 to 1, I think it's a very fair price in a race that is going to be catching everyone's attention on Saturday. So Fugitive, you mentioned that he goes well fresh. And I suppose the, the one element that you're concerned about is Stage Star and, and the real whacker being off for a certain amount of time. But it wouldn't it just wouldn't concern you as much for Fugitive, maybe because he's got another year on his back, more experience at least? Yeah, he's got that. I also think that he will be primed for these Cheltenham races, whereas Stage Star will be aiming more towards the spring. Uh, the real whacker could be primed and ready to go. I just don't know with him um but it's the 12 stone that really puts me off him so yes the layoff has to be a little bit of a concern but i just think he's going to be ready more ready than the two market leaders and he's a much bigger price yeah okay the interesting horses over from ireland as well authorized art um for willie mullins who has had the benefit of of of, of racing i think they probably would have thought that it was slightly better ground for him and um we've also got gavin cromwell's final orders and he's been in in excellent form you won't forget how um how well gavin cromwell's horses ran at uh, the uh, the showcase meeting the first meeting back at, in october at cheltenham so they're two horses to keep an eye on but um Four, uh, TC's gone for Fugitive and uh, Ross has gone for Angel's Breath. So we've got some value here. Angel's Breath at 11 to 1, Fugitive at 8 to 1 against the favourites. Um, right, we've got really good racing throughout the course of the weekend, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. But we'll we'll look at the uh, intermediate handicap hurdle at 3.30 next. Um, again, uh, a race uh, where we've got some horses trying to defy big weight, Springwell Bay being uh, one of them. And he's likely to be a favourite for this. And and uh, um, then we've got uh, the likes of Resplendent Glory, uh, Gay Name, um, London Off and Calling, Off is Calling for, for Ireland. And in general, some horses progressing nicely, progressing in the right way. And Ross, I suppose we should start with Springwell Way in, in terms of him coming back off, um, another horse coming back off the, off the layoff. How much are you hopeful to see him sort of uh, develop into into a better horse this this season well for a, a yard that don't really talk their horses up they they've never really um, hidden their their admiration they have for this horse and the hopes they have for him i thought he had a, a perfectly good season last year he was maybe slightly disappointing at this meeting last year when only third in the in the grade 2 but that was over 2 miles and he just looked to get outpaced and and stick on i think he likes soft ground he's a he's a stayer in the making uh, on the face of it, his sixth place finish at the Aintree Festival was maybe a bit disappointing. But when you watch it back, he had to come from a long way back and the, the principles were ridden very prominently and he got hampered at a crucial stage. And uh, Irish uh, Point, who, who won that race, has, has come out and, and done good things already this season. So I think that's a, a decent uh, form line there. Um, and I just think in a, in, a, in a fairly disappointing heat, if there's any horse here that's got... Uh, pretensions of being a graded horse it's him nothing else in the field can do that uh, yes he's got top weight yes it's first time out but John Joe's starting to get his horses coming forward now he's well capable of getting the race win off huge layoffs um, they've been a bit slow to come to hand but I think now the rain has come a lot of these trainers are going to be able to start getting the horses on their on their grass gallops and many of them are, are loath to do real fast work on synthetic surfaces they don't want to work them fast on synthetic surfaces so they're waiting for the grass obviously Jack Dawes Castle is the, is the best training setup in the country so I would think there's no reason that he won't be 
more than ready to go now. Um, I thought two to one or roundabout there was actually a decent price against opposition that are not of the calibre of him. And I think if he's ready to go, he'll he'll win this as a springboard on to better things. Yeah, he's got top rate top rating of 137, four pounds higher than the next Rock My Way. He's probably got a bit of a inflated rating, but based on his his win in the Grade Two at Cheltenham back earlier this year, um, and he's probably more on the on is more of a tumbling mark than a, on a mark that is progressive. Um, the rest is, is still sort of sort of trying to find their level. Um, uh, so Springwell Bain for the John Joe O'Neill team and any anyone that hasn't listened yet to our jumps preview, um, if you haven't, then you must make sure to do so straight after this. Um, uh, we'll, we'll give you a little sneak peek because TC thinks that John Joe O'Neill have quite a, a good productive year this year as a trainer. Um, Springwell Wet Bay, does he come in that into that reckoning in the context of this race for you? Yeah, he does. I'm not dead against him by any means. He's not going to be my selection. And I completely echo everything Ross said there as well. I think he's a major player and probably the only horse that can really propel himself to the next level. But I just don't love this race from a punting perspective. And it was going to be a default selection no matter what for me because I have no real strong views. So to default with a favourite would just seem rather foolish and cheap. So I'm not doing it. Um, if I had a stronger case for Springwell Bay, then of course uh, he would be my pick. But um, I don't have that strong case. Ross has, which is great. And I'm glad he mentioned it, but just not for me first time up. Um, so I'm going to side with a horse at a bigger price, uh, which is going to be Gin Yame. Again, this is a tentative selection, not a race I'll be punting in, but as we're covering it as a feature, there has to be a, a pick. Uh, and Guigname is going to be the one for the Joe Tizard yard, largely due to the fact that Joe's got his horses in great form, currently striking at 24% over the last fortnight. He's a five-year-old, uh, Guigname. He's open to further improvement. And I actually really liked his seasonal reappearance when second the other day on testing ground. Uh, whether he's good enough to win, I don't know. Um, but I think at six to one, he's probably the second most likely winner behind Springwell Bay. And I'm happy to take that that bit of value with a default selection like him. Yeah, looking through the the list and lineup, it's probably not you know it's nowhere near what we see earlier on in the card in terms of a uh, strength and depth. If anything, you probably think, oh, what about an Irish runner here? Um, difficult to know how um, strong they are in comparison to us. But um, Tony Martin had a bit of a plot job last year with unanswered. Not sure how uh, much another choice is a bit of a plot job for Matthew Smith coming over from Ireland. But in all in all, it's a weak enough affair on a on a day where we've got great racing, on a weekend where we've got racing um, uh, from obviously not just uh, Cheltenham, but also on the other side of the, the Irish Sea. We've got plenty of horses that are coming back off, off after a layoff to, to begin their season. So lots to choose from. Um, we'll start with uh, TC, who had a good weekend last weekend. And uh, we'll, we'll find out what, what you found on a, on a really busy Saturday. Yeah, my nap comes on the flat, unfortunately. I apologise to all you Jumps fans. But this is supposed to be the strongest selection of the day. And it is, uh, for me, unfortunately, it is on the weather. In the 11.45 at Lingfield, the horse called Island Native it's a second division of a 0 to 65 handicap, so it's by no means the classiest event of the day. But I think this horse is pretty much a good thing in here. Uh, and actually, I actually used the word good thing with Gaskill last week. And instantly after that podcast, I regretted it, thinking if this gets beaten, I'm in serious trouble. Unfortunately, uh, fortunately for me, he got the job done. So hopefully this one does too. Yeah, exactly. So hopefully this one does too. Um, this three-year-old has been very well found in the market for his last four starts, all for Heather Main. Ridden in different ways on each occasion. They adopted different tactics, trying to break through. He went from the front one time, was three lengths clear turning in and got collared. Last time up, he was ridden just off the speed. They went up the inside, looked to make a big dash for the line and got chinned right on the wire uh, over a slightly longer trip. He's subsequently been sold for 20000 to the horse watchers and moved to Mick Appleby. If that's not a big enough catalyst to see this horse break through, then I don't know what is. We know that Mick Appleby is the best all-weather trainer in the country, especially with horses he picks up uh, from the horse in training sales. So I'm expecting a big jolt of improvement. And this horse doesn't even need to improve to win. The last four runs are good enough in this kind of quality of race. But Sheen Murphy, interestingly, keeps the ride as well. He rode last time when Heather Main trained this horse, uh, but he sticks on board, which I think is good. I like the slightly wider draw with him as well. Um, you know, in flat racing, punters generally want inside draws because they think it means they can ride the rail and go the shortest way around. And that is uh, largely a big positive. But on a track like Lingfield, where you can slingshot off the final bend and actually the inside generally rides deeper, you want to be slightly further out. So I think Sheen can sit 
maybe one or two off the rail and that will be the prime position. Uh, and Island Native is just very well handicapped to win. So he's my nap in the 11.45 at Lingfield. And my next best is over the jumps uh, in the 3.39 at Weatherby, a horse called Ready Steady Bow. Uh, this seven-year-old has been a rather slow developer. Lucinda Russell has always said that he wants three miles plus. Uh, and last year, he kind of started to uh, build on what he'd shown earlier in, early in his campaign uh, when he won by 30 lengths at Perth in April, the last race of the season for him. Um, he came back and ran over an adequate trip, just two and a half miles, went from the front, just seemed to take a blow late in the day. And, you know, he wasn't ready for that. He'll come on a lot for that effort, I'm sure, as he now steps back up in trip. And that run that I mentioned at Perth, where he won um, by 30 lengths, he recorded an RPR of 130. He's able to run up 113 in this race, the 3.39 at Weatherby, under what I believe is the best jockey in the race in Patrick Wodge. So hopefully Ready Steady Bow can get the job done in the 3.39 at Weatherby. Thank you very much for that. And um, another plug for our Jumps at National Hunt Preview podcast, a horse that uh, TC put up for the Stayers division. And we have to say quite a tentative have to put up a selection. Home by the Lee has his first uh, run back of the season in, in Navin for you, TC. So I'm sure you'll be keeping an eye on that. Um, and there's so much to look forward to. More of that, I'll just mention them when we get to the end of the Naps and Next Best because... Um, Again, we want to make sure you put all of the horses that we selected from that uh, Jumps Preview pod into your tracker. And a good few of them are running this weekend. Um, Ross, uh, one of yours actually, John Bon, um, I'd love to get your opinion before we get into your naps and be next best about the decision um, by Nicky Henderson to run in the Schler Chase on Sunday. I was quite surprised. I thought they were going to wait for the for the Tingle Creek. Um, I think it's, it's, it's great for the race. It adds a bit of depth, depth to what has consistently been a fairly weak uh, race. I don't think he's going to have it all his own way. New Bay Negra is very good for first time out and fresh. I think Edward Stone, I see him as being more of a stare as the season progresses, but I think he's a little bit of a forgotten horse. I mean, what he did in the Tingle Creek himself last year was mighty impressive. I, I think it'll be a good race, and I don't think it's a, an absolute gimme for John Bond. I really don't. I'm excited to see uh, how Nico, who I presume be jocked up on him, gets gets on with him um, and it certainly is the race of the day on uh, Sunday to watch Yeah so uh, John Bond part of uh, the National Preview horses to follow from Ross what about your horses to follow from the NAP and Next Bet selections this weekend? So my NAP comes in the 12.44 from Weatherby uh, the novices chase and it's Nicky Richards trained Nell's son um, he jumped really really well on chase debut at, at Carlisle um, was a was a pretty emphatic winner. His nearest challenger did did um, drop out uh, two or three from home, but I loved how he jumped. I loved how he travelled. More importantly, Nicky Richards' horses are virtually all stepping forwards in a big way from their first run to their second. Um, if Nell's son does that, he's gonna he's gonna win this very easily, and he perhaps doesn't have to step forward anything at all to to, to win this. He was a hundred and thirty rated hurdler. Given how well he jumped fences. It's very easy to see that he's going to make up into a 10, 15 pound better chaser. He's off just one, three, five here. Um, I think he's the best horse in the race. Nicky Richards will have him even more forward than he was before. So I think now Sun wins the 12.44 at Weatherby. And then for my next best, I'm actually taking on TC in the 3.39 uh, with a Chad Collier trained Ladron. So a horse I really like. He pops up. He's very consistent. He runs over all sorts of trips from two mile three to, to three mile three. Um, Crucially, he's back on his last winning mark of 114. William Shanahan had a sit on him on his on his uh, comeback run over two mile three, which was inadequate, but he stayed on nicely in the, uh, late in the day. Uh, three miles soft ground and Weatherby are absolutely his bag. Um, I think he'd be a decent price. Uh, so in the 3.39, the next best is Ledrone. OK, looking forward to those. Um, looking forward to that battle between TC and Ross. We love a bit of that. And... Uh... As I mentioned, just going to uh, have a bit of a plug for some of the horses that um, we put up, a, a couple of other horses that we put up from our um, our preview podcast. And one of the races of the weekend, it might just get lost in the in the absolute mist of uh, Cheltenham and, of course, Lingfield for TC and, and Weatherby as well. But Navin is hosting a very, very good beginner's chase at 3.15 on Saturday. You've got Fasal Vega, um, who's long been um, talked of as... Um, you know, one of the best horses at William Allen's yard ended last season on a high um, in Punchestown.
down, obviously was beaten in the Supreme Novices hurdle, but he is um, a Cheltenham Festival winner. He has his first start over fences, but he's up against one of my horses to follow, which is in the pocket. Would have to say it wasn't necessarily of love to have seen him run against Vassal Vega first time out over fences, but um, I have to be confident in this horse. Um, the son of Blue Brazil, who uh, was a winner of a grade one novice hurdle um, at Aintree to finish out his season. I'm really hoping that he can give Vassal Vega something to think about. So that is um, that beginner's chase at Navin. Um, obviously, as we mentioned, John Bond's running um, and there's uh, just a lot of very good racing and a lot of racing that you want to keep an eye on for the future. Even on Sunday at uh, Navin as well, there's a very good beginner's chase with um, the likes of classical Ju dream um factor file who was another horse that was put up as a um horse to follow all running um potentially they all need to be declared um tomorrow running um as we're recording today on thursday so those are naps next best just horses to watch out at a very important time of the season as horses get reintroduced so lots to look forward to um Thank you for listening as always. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We do this every week for Jumps Racing fans and those that like to have something a little bit extra on the side when TC's found a good thing on the flats, on the all weather. Um, don't forget all new SBK users get £30 in free bets when they sign up and bet £10 for the first time. And make sure to check out that feature on The Real Wacker at Patrick Neville's Yard. Um, there is a YouTube link to it in the podcast description. Definitely well worth a watch um, ahead of his big day on Saturday. Um, we'll have lots of SBK offers and promotions throughout the weekend. So make sure you head to the SBK site and uh, we'll see you next week.